Yep, it's another Rimfire mashup this week, and we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel this time, as one of these clips goes back to 2009, would you believe? Where does the time go, hey? Now, in this first hunt, I decided to try and set up in a field with livestock in it. That was a big mistake, and something I've learned to try and avoid ever since, as something always gets in the way. The first bird on the scene, and usually is, is a magpie. Now, I'm really after hooded crows, and one thing I did realise soon on, if you want, shoot, want to shoot hooded crows, you have to let the magpies feed. They act as a decoy and give the hooded crows confidence to come down, as you'll see later. Shortly after the magpie left, this hooded crow got the nerve up to come down and feed. And then his mate turned up, and they seemed to be having quite a jolly time at the rabbit. And I know what you're thinking, why hasn't he taken the shot? They're giving him a perfect opportunity. And, now I'm watching this, I'm starting to wonder myself, when am I about to shoot? Now, you remember that old cow that walked across the screen a few minutes ago? Yep, she's standing right in front of me. Now, I might be able to squeeze a shot by her and take one of those hooded crows, but if anything goes wrong, I don't want to be trying to explain to the farmer how I shot his cow in the butt. But no matter anyway, as a few minutes later, her mate turns up and blocks off any opportunity for a shot at all. They have anywhere inside three fields to stand and gossip about how the best way to nurse a calf, but no, they decide to stand right in front of my firing line. Now, the second cow did dander off after a while, but this old girl in the picture here, I think she fell asleep on her feet. Now, as you can hear, I tried sweet-talking her, even tossing the odd stick and pebble next her, but to no avail, she would not move. So then I tried a different tactic. I started bawling at her like a calf. Sorry, that's mooing like a calf for those not from Northern Ireland. But believe it or not, it looked like it was starting to work. And what do you know? She got the message, hey. I think I was that ecstatic at the time I moved too rashly getting the gun back up as I wasn't using a hide but had myself tucked into the hedge to try and hide and the birds seemed to notice it and were away but the crows were quickly replaced by the magpies again and I knew if they were feeding away quite confidently the crows would be back very soon And sure enough, I soon had my opportunity. And the 22 Magnum I was using made short work of it. And as you can hear, this really got the rest of the birds quite riled up. Which meant there probably is a good chance of me getting another opportunity. So I sat my ground. That's when Mr. Magpie came, and this time the truce was off. He got the length of the fencing line, and that was him.
That was a long, frustrating morning. Watching crows, I couldn't shoot. But there was lessons learnt, and thankfully I did get something at the end of the day, without shooting a cow in the butt. Now this is a totally different morning, as it's wet, mucky, windy and cold. But thankfully by this time I had acquired uh, this little pop-up hide called the bush. And it does help keep you out of the worst of the rain and the cold. Which is a good thing because I'm stuck up on a hill here with nothing but this old cattle crush as a shelter. Again this morning I'm using a Ruger 7722 Varmint Target and 22 Magnum Rimfire that I used to have and it's topped off with a, a Burris Full Field 2 4.5 to 14 to 42 tactical scope. The ammunition I was using was a Remington 33 grain Accutip V which shot really well out of the 22 Magnum. It must have been a really wet year back then, as I don't think I can remember the ground being as wet as this since. As you can see I'm setting up the same way as I usually do, a dead rabbit for bait and a dead magpie at this point set up in a little wire cradle I've made uh, to use as a decoy, as I don't think I had any hooded crows at the time. I think I'll get into the hay before I do lose that hat. You can see that the first birds again, down to the rabbit, are magpies. And I generally leave them alone, at the start anyway, and use them as decoys to help draw in a hooded crow or two, which are usually a good bit more cautious than the magpies. And you can see in this case, it worked a treat. Now, once the hooded crows come, being a bigger and more aggressive bird, they usually push the magpies off to the side and feed themselves. This hooded crow obviously seems a wee bit peeved at my decoy magpie, not giving way to him, let's say. Not that it'll matter much to him now. Now, this is a very frosty morning, many moons ago, as you'll see by the haircut. Back then, I didn't have the little pop-up hide that I use quite often nowadays. So I would have found a thick hedge that I could crawl into and make a hide in, which worked quite well for years when I was younger. 
but it wasn't as comfortable and it's not as weatherproof as using the little pop-up hide. That was a really frosty morning and I'm not quite in the centre of the camera but you can see the setup's the same. A dead magpie as a decoy and a dead rabbit as bait with the guts strewn out. Would you look at the cut of the on boy here? It's not as much of a haircut as more I just got it cut to keep it out of my eyes. Anyway, you can see that I have a different rifle with me this morning. It's my custom Ruger 1022 that came from Rimfire Magic. It has a Hogue green overmolded stock, a green mountain 16 inch fluted barrel and the action had been tuned and I fitted a 2.5 to 10 by 50 I think it was DMP uh, Diabin scope to it. Goodness I still have that jumper somewhere though it's not as fluffy and white now as it was back then. I think that coat and hat's still knocking about somewhere too and since that's 10 years or more ago, I definitely got good wear out of it. You can quickly see that I made another blunder this morning. Although the field I set my decoy and bait up in had no livestock in it, the field behind it obviously does. And they're right in the road just as the first bird arrives. Now a hedge should never be considered a solid backstop and you can see with this one you could spit through it never mind shoot through it. Looks like we have another magpie hating hooded crow but by the sounds of it the local magpies are coming to the rescue. But it doesn't really do me any good as I still don't have a safe shot not to the sheep move away anyhow. But finally, the sheep finally move out of the background and I'm getting ready to take my opportunity. That's if I can get a steady shot at him without pecking the life out of my decoy magpie. But then a warning call comes from another crow and he's off. So that's what the warning call was for and why the hooded crow flew off. There was a couple of buzzards in the area. Common buzzards are a member of the bird of prey family and are fully protected in the UK. So don't be anybody suggesting I shoot them in the comments please. The morning's drawn on quite a bit and the weather started to change as you can see. But finally, thankfully, one of the hooded crows has got its confidence back and comes down to the rabbit again. And finally, the 40 grain subsonic does the job. Though the rest of the rooks and jackdaws in the area weren't terribly impressed by its performance. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little mashup video. I know the bags weren't terribly impressive, but that's just how it goes sometimes, and you have to take what you can get. But anyway, take care everybody, and Look after yourselves.